This is my bullet 41 foot end fed long wire antenna made by Palomar Engineers and this video is my review of it. This is the first antenna of my first HF radio. I was looking for an antenna that was easy to set up, was inexpensive and did not attract unwanted attention. I bought this in the beginning of winter and set it up temporarily as the ground is frozen and as you can see still has snow on it. I used this wooden tripod to hold up the ballon as I could not put in a proper post in the ground. The wire goes up and uh, goes onto these poles that I have on my deck before going back down on the other side. The antenna comes back down and ends at this tree. So the wire starts at a height of two meters above the ground, then rises to four meters and ends back at about two and a half meters above the ground. The wire is nearly invisible from the neighbor's yards and none of them seem to know it is here. The configuration I use may not sound that great, but the instructions for the antenna do say, this antenna can be installed in a number of different configurations. Have fun and experiment with different configurations. So that's what I have. In this electrical box is the feed line choke that is required part of the antenna. The choke is fitted at 16 feet down the coax line from the ballon. This antenna design uses the outside braid of the coax as counterpoise and the choke blocks RF signals from passing this point and going into the radio. I put the choke in this electrical box which is inside this garbage can normally to protect it from damage and from the weather. So with the lid down on the garbage can the choke is kept pretty safe. The choke is very important. They even have a section on it in the manual for the antenna. The purpose of the choke is to stop RF current on the outside of the coax braid at a specific distance which optimizes the length of the antenna which is counterpoise plus wire portion for a total length to reduce the SWR. Do not forget to use a choke and do not ground the counterpoise or the antenna will not tune correctly. The coax from the ballon to the choke is used as the counterpoise and this must be kept above ground. So notice that I don't have it on the ground, it's well above the ground. The instructions say remember that the counterpoise radiates like the other half of a dipole. So raised counterpoises work better than low or ground mounted counterpoises. The only change I've made to the antenna is to the ballon here. I've added this skirt made of duct tape around the bottom of it so this way rainwater will not get into the coax cable which is mounted on the bottom and to keep it nice and dry. I've also added a layer of electrical tape here on the coax to keep rainwater out and it's working quite well so far. My ICOM IC7300 has a built-in tuner that is able to match the antenna on most HF bands. SWR is too high to work on the 160, 80 and 30 meter bands, but it does tune perfectly on the other bands from 40 through 6 meters. This is the SWR graphing function utility on the IC7300. For the 30 meter band, you can see that SWR is just too high. Same thing with the 80 meter band. It's just too high and the tuner can't tune it in. The 160 meter band, as you can see here, is partly usable. But on the whole, it's not usable. It's just a little section in the middle that, that's good. So I'd have to be very careful if I was going to use this band. So the specs on, the, on this antenna do say that it works from 40 meters and up. So this kind of fits with the specs. I'd say that I'm achieving everything in the spec except for the 30 meter band, which should work, but doesn't. I'll have to uh, try some counterpoise tuning perhaps, and maybe I'll be able to fix that up. Now to talk about the results I've had with this antenna. It works well, even though it is just four meters or 12 feet off the ground. In just over two months of occasional use, I have made 138 contacts in 23 countries. From my shack in Ontario, Canada, and using 100 watts of power, 
I have reached countries such as Brazil, St. Lucia, the Azores, France, Hungary, Italy, Romania, and Russia. The most frequent contact areas, however, are in North Carolina, Kentucky, Illinois, and Minnesota, or areas that are around 1,300 kilometers or 800 miles away. Shorter distances are not so frequent, and I've only had four contacts within my own province of Ontario. In conclusion, I feel that this antenna is great value for the money, and I would recommend it any time a simple, inexpensive, unobtrusive antenna is required.